All right, so today's going to be short, simple, maybe sweet, and straight to the point. So uh, 2020 was a year of social distancing. Uh, Kyle and the guys, you can come up. <laughs> uh, 2020 was a year of social distancing. And 2020 was also a year of crowds. And as humans, we love to be together. And we love to gather for a cause. So who here surfs? All right. Who here uh, body surfs? Couple guys. All right, who here crowd surfs? One, okay. Yeah, I love crowd surfing. Going, like we can't go to concerts anymore, yeah, but growing up, like me and Kyle were in middle school and we were putting up our eight-year-old brother up in the crowds. <laughs> Like, oh, crowd surfing is so much fun. Today we're talking about crowds, and we need one volunteer to crowd surf. Who wants to crowd surf? Oh, Eli? Eli? All right. <laughs> you can stand up on here. So in our story today, this city was packed, and I'm sure people were doing this. <laughs> Hey, let's give him a hand. <laughs> All right, they're going to take Eli around, around the crowd. So today we're looking at a, an event that happened 2,000 years ago. This really happened. And five crowds met together to form a crowd of an estimated 2.5 million people in this city at this time. People were definitely crowd surfing. The purpose of this event was Jesus was going to proclaim himself as king. And as we look at these five crowds today, very short and simply, five crowds, which crowd are you a part of? So we're going to look at John 12. You can open up your Bibles on your phone, your paper Bibles to John 12. And here's, here's the background of this event. Um, so the crowd is gathered in this city. The city is called Jerusalem. And they were gathered for a festival called Passover. And it, this was required mandatory attendance for all the Jews in the land. Everywhere, they had to go there. So much pressure to attend. It was a big deal. Everyone was going. You had to. And people were wondering, would Jesus be there? And if you remember from the last couple of weeks, um, just to make sure Jesus would not come, the religious leaders issued a warrant for his arrest. So anyone that even sees Jesus is supposed to call the police. So six days before this event of Passover, all these people coming, Jesus enters the suburb, the city called Bethany. That was last week's story. And he was eating dinner with Lazarus, Lazarus Mary, Martha, having a good time. The very next day is today's story. So Jesus enters this city packed with 2.5 million people, boldly and confidently proclaiming himself as the savior of the world. Even though he is a wanted man, Jesus does what he wants, and he proclaims himself as king. So we're going to read John 12, 12 through 19. John 12, 12 through 19. And I think you might hear this story a lot. We hear it every year at this time. So I'm going to take a little different angle at it. As we read these verses, think about the five crowds. All right, John 12, 12 through 19. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. 
Look, the whole world has gone after him. So as we look at these five crowds, think about which crowd you think you belong to. And as we read the story, realize Jesus came today in the story for you today in 2021. So first, it's kind of like the Enneagram. Are you a one? Okay. Are you a one? The first crowd is the crowd that leaves the festival. So this crowd was the largest group of the five. Um, Jews from across the globe were in this city. There was so much need to be there. And when they heard the news that Jesus was outside the city, they left their religious festival and they went out to meet him. They left their religion and went to meet Jesus. They realized following Jesus was more important than following religious rituals, no matter what others' expectations of you may be. And that's in verse 12 and 13. It says, The great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. So is this you in crowd one? Did you grow up Catholic? Did you grow up thinking church was all about the rules? Does it feel like God is mad at you? Did your parents make you go to church and you haven't gone since high school? Were you a part of a different religion like Jehovah Witness or Mormon? Or maybe as a Christian, even right now, here at the gathering, when you come every Sunday, maybe you're just going through the motions and you feel like church is a routine. The fact that you are here today right now listening is step one in dropping religion and embracing a relationship with Jesus Christ. Like being a Christian is not all about keeping the rules. It's all about having a relationship with Jesus. Like we follow him because we love him and he loves us, not because we have to. So this is crowd number one. Is this you, the crowd that leaves the festival to follow Jesus? Are you a two? Second crowd is the disciples. This is the smallest crowd of the five. There's only 12 of them. And they lived with Jesus. They were average dudes. And Jesus called them to learn and do life with him and to do mini ministry with him every day. And they're mentioned in verse 16. And the disciples in this whole scene were probably following right behind Jesus. Like, I imagine like a parade. They're kind of just walking behind like, wow, this is pretty sweet. Like enjoying the fanfare. They, were, they got a close-up experience of what it meant to live life with Jesus and what, what this huge event, praising him, was all about. So is this you? Are you following Jesus right behind him? Is your relationship with Jesus very close right now? Uh, Micah, John Albano, and John German and I are in a discipleship group, and we have a workbook, and we meet every Tuesday night. And we're, like, very intentionally discipling each other. And our lesson the other week defined what a disciple is according to this book. And it, it says, A disciple is one who responds in faith and obedience to the gracious call to follow Jesus Christ. Being a disciple is a lifelong process of dying to self while allowing Jesus Christ to come alive in us. Is this you? Are you a disciple? Uh, when my dad visited here last November in his sermon, this quote of his just sticks in my mind. He says, all disciples are Christians, but not all Christians are disciples. Like, all disciples are Christians, but not all Christians are disciples. Like, you're you may be a Christian, Jesus is your Savior, but are you actually following Jesus with your life? Like, are you following Jesus so closely? Are you in a connect group? Do you have a spiritual mentor? Are you being discipled by someone? This is crowd number two. Is this you? Are you a three? Um, this crowd is the crowd that shares about Jesus. So I didn't know this like till like this week. I've heard this story my entire life, but I kind of like looked at it more. But this is the same crowd that saw Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead. And they were also following right behind Jesus into Jerusalem. So there's a huge crowd waiting for Jesus, and there's also another crowd following Jesus into the city from where he came in Bethany. Um, in John 11:45. 
after Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, it says, Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did believed in him. So people came to know Jesus as their Savior. These were Jesus' followers because Lazarus was raised from the dead by Jesus. And then in today's verses, in John 12, 17, it says, Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. So this is weeks later. And this crowd is still sharing their faith. It wasn't like a mountaintop experience. Oh, camp was great, you know. Now I'm going home. Like, no. They experienced a miracle. And they, they kept on sharing their faith as a lifestyle, even weeks later after the excitement worn down. Like, these people in this crowd were believers, and they knew the importance of sharing their faith. And they shared it with others, the miracles Jesus had done in their life. Like, is this you? Are you a Christian? Meaning, Jesus is your Savior. Um, do you share your faith with others so they can be saved too? Or do you keep it to yourself? Do you share with others the miracles that Jesus has done in your life? Like even weeks and months after they happen? Or do you forget? Or do you share your testimony? Like are, or are you scared or nervous what others might think of you? You're you're not sharing your faith. The time is now. And I think a great example of this, the urgency to share our faith, is Ricky. So last night, uh, Ricky, Santiar, Bethany, and I were at Lobster King restaurant. And then Ricky just went all out. Our uh, server was this lady named Fanny. And he's just like, hey, do you know Jesus? <laughs> and straight up. And I was like nervous. I'm the pastor. I'm supposed to be, like, professional. Like, nah, nah. Ricky's the professional. Like, he was, he was so smooth and gentle and just casual. I was like, wow. And he, just, he was not even scared. And he shared his faith without fear. And you guys can all pray for Fanny from Lobster King. And if you go there, you can talk to her. And let's, let's see what Jesus can do in our life. Fanny from Lobster King. Ricky knows the urgency. And we should all know this urgency. Like, the time is now. Jesus is coming soon. And if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you do go to hell. That is the sad truth. But if you know Jesus as your Savior, you go to heaven. This is crowd number three, the crowd that shares their faith. Are you a four, the fourth crowd? The crowd that hears about Jesus from others. So these are the people that the last crowd shared their faith with. This is Fanny from Lobster King. So this dude raised another dude from the dead. You want to check that out, yeah? Like, no matter who it is. Okay, this guy raised someone who was dead for four days. I want to go see this for myself. This was this crowd. Uh, verse 18 says, many people, because they had heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. They were curious. They were seeking. They were searching. And they were invited by others to know Jesus. So is this you? Are you here today at the gathering because someone invited you here? Was it, you, were you invited by Google Maps, Instagram, Facebook, or Yelp? Or maybe it's your first time at the gathering, or you've come many times. Or maybe you haven't been to church until now, since like before COVID, or before like high school. But you're here today. And you're curious, why does your friend care so much about Jesus? You feel like you should maybe pray sometimes and stuff. If this is you today, like, thank you for being here today. We love you. We welcome you. You are here with us, and that's awesome. And I hope you make lots of friends here. But first, you need to know, I'm praying that you can know Jesus as your friend here and Jesus in your life every single day. He is the most important thing in my life. And that is why we gather together any day. It's because of Jesus. He is what unites us. And believing in Jesus as your personal Savior is the only way to be saved from your sin and to live forever with him. This is crowd number four, the crowd that heard from others about Jesus. And the last crowd, the fifth crowd, the crowd who rejected Jesus. So the Pharisees were the religious leaders. And this event this festival called Passover was the Pharisees' time to shine. They've been waiting all year for this. And they just knew Jesus would crash their party, and sure enough, he did. 
And like anyone who saw Jesus was supposed to call the police and arrest him, but that did not turn out at all, yeah. Like that did not go according to plan. People are waving these branches like, Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus save us now. That's not what they wanted to hear. These Pharisees wanted to be the Savior, not Jesus. Verse 19 says, the Pharisees were talking to each other and they say, see, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. They thought they were too good for Jesus. They wanted to, like, work for their own salvation. They had no need for Jesus in their life. And it, is this you? Are you not a Christian? Are you in denial of who Christians say Jesus is? Are you rejecting Jesus because of something bad that happened in your life a couple years ago? Or maybe salvation through Jesus just sounds too good to be true. You just surrender your life and say a little prayer. Jesus comes in your heart. It's too good to be true because it's all based on what Jesus has done for us, not what we do for a God, which is every other religion. If this is you, I'm glad you are here today. I'm praying that you'll come to know Jesus and to embrace Jesus and to no longer reject Jesus. So you can have the hope, the assurance of where you go when you die, and the peace and the joy that I have in my heart right now. Like, this is crowd number five. Is this you? So at this event 2,000 years ago, 2.5 million people were present. Five crowds were there. The crowd that left the festival to follow Jesus. The disciples. The crowd that shares about Jesus. The crowd that heard about Jesus from others. And the crowd that was rejecting Jesus. Out of these five crowds, which one are you? Ask yourself right now, which of these five crowds are you? And you can be more than one. And these five crowds include everyone who's ever lived and includes you today. And this event that happened, Jesus did this back then for you right now. So you can know that Jesus is the king of the entire world and that Jesus wants to be the king of your very own personal tiny life. It's so big to him. And as Jesus is riding on a young donkey followed by his disciples and this huge crowd meeting this other crowd, Palm branches waving. The crowd is shouting, Hosanna, save us now. And most people knew what Jesus was doing. Um, he was fulfilling Old Testament prophecy. And a prophet named Zechariah, 500 years earlier, predicted this exact thing would happen. And if you look in the Bible in Zechariah 9.9, 9, it says, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So this was predicted 500 years in the past. This would happen on this day. And Steve texted me this week as well. In Daniel 9.25, there's a little known prophecy as well, where Daniel predicted the exact, exact day that Palm Sunday would be. Check it out. It's Daniel 9.25. 25. You can talk to Steve after this. Not to mention the 300 plus other prophecies that Jesus completely fulfilled to a T. There was no mistaken that Jesus is the Savior. Like in the past, when Jesus would perform a miracle, he would tell the people like, hey, don't, don't tell anyone. Let's keep it a secret. And they'd all tell people anyway. But now Jesus was like, okay, I'm going to tell everyone. I'm proclaiming myself as king. Because it was time to reveal his identity. It's like when a superhero finally tells who they are. Now was the time. Jesus is finally going public about who he is. The king of the world, God in the flesh, the savior of the world. And the crowd was praising Jesus saying, yes, yes, this is who we've been waiting for. And as Christians, we traditionally title this day the triumphal entry. But it should actually not be called that. Like we call it the triumphal entry because this was the peak popularity of Jesus. This was his maximum, everyone knew about him. The like, entire world was following him, like the Pharisees said. But this day should actually be called the tragic entry. And as Kyle read in, in Luke 19, it shares this story as well. And in Luke 19, 41 and 42, it says, as Jesus approached Jerusalem 
and saw the city, he wept over it. So Jesus was crying as he was riding in on a donkey, all these crowds, like amazing, but Jesus was crying. And he said, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. So some people in this crowd did know Jesus as their Savior. They were believers, but most of them were not. And everyone there at that time was looking to Jesus for the wrong reasons. They wanted a Savior from their current political problems to save their nation at the time. They wanted to be free. They wanted, hey, our elections, hey, stuff we, we talk about too, our presidents and stuff. They were way focused on that, just like we can be sometimes. When really, Jesus wanted them to know that he was there to save their souls. And for you today, which of these five crowds you are in? Are you a one? You grew up in religion, going through the motions. You're, you're missing that relationship. Are you a two, a disciple who's closely following Jesus? Are you a three, a Christian that is sharing their faith? Are you a four, someone invited you here today? Are you a five, you're rejecting Jesus? All of us need to know the simple truth of this story. Jesus is king. He was then, he is now. He will always be. He's alive in heaven. We need to die to ourselves and follow him. 2,000 years ago, he came to earth as a man to save you because he loves you. You need saving because you are a sinner. Sinners go to hell. But if you are saved, you go to heaven. Jesus is the Savior. He is the one who saves. He is the only way. He made a way for you to live through the, cl- through the cross. And he loves you. And he wants to save you. But Jesus is the only way to be saved. It's simple. It's so simple. All you have to do is surrender your life to Jesus and receive the gift of what he has done for you already. Today is the beginning of Passion Week. And as we intro into this amazing week that we remember, on Friday we'll be right here at 6.30 to talk all about Jesus' death on the cross and the pain he went through because he loves you. Two days later, next Sunday, we'll be, we'll be right here at 4 to celebrate that Jesus is alive and came back to life three days later. Like, we know the end of the story. He's alive in heaven, and one day, all of you who are Christians, who have surrendered your life to Jesus, he is your Savior from sin, we will be in heaven together praising God on the next Palm Sunday. Look at this. Revelations 7, 9, and 10. It says, this is in heaven. It's going to happen in the future. It says, After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, every tribe, every people, and every language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. That's Jesus. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. If you are a Christian, we have this to look forward to. We will all be there. (laughs) We will be part of this multitude in the crowd. This is great right here, right now at the gathering. It's going to get even better. Let's bring as many people to Jesus as we can. And this is a great week to do it. Invite them to Good Friday. Invite them to next Sunday here at 4 p.m. Amen? All right. Dear Jesus, we love you. We thank you. You made a way. You are the only way. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you so much. Amen.